Hello friends and welcome. So this is um, a, a video series and on the digital trap and it's also a start of a new series of videos probably around finding a good digital source or building one and, um, and modifying CD players. So if you're interested in that, make sure you stick around um, because I'll have some videos um, coming up as I'm working with CD players um, and probably also look to uh, at some point also um, build my own deck. And, um, and how I got to that story will be explained in this and some of the learnings and trappings I will share in this video. So hopefully um, for, the, for those of you that are maybe in a similar situation or have something similar can can then relate to it or recognize the situation in it and, 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 and hopefully find a way out quicker that way. And um, so this the introduction to the series will probably be put to part and um, and it's how I got into the digital trap and 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 slowly with specs and reviews taking over from uh, my initial journey and so um, this the, the, these two videos will be in a little bit different format than a lot of mine so it will be in the form of a bit of a story and um, yes let's get into that story so where my story um, started was in probably the early 90s when I went up to a, uh, I wanted an audio system. I was a student at the time and um, I wanted an audio system. And luckily I ran into the right dealer. And that dealer was so nice. And this is, by the way, a really good uh, learning point why box store dealers that know a shitload and can repair gear themselves is probably a very good thing to have um, if you now compare it to online shopping and i'll tell you immediately why because i ran in there and he sort of you know was sort of um, i had back i already had um built a um, speaker which was a CAF cs3 which was a kit speaker um i used to have we used to have an amp for that and and um, I'm not sure if we had a cheap, we had probably had some kind of cheap CD player. We had an LP player and cassette decks, a lot of, you know, we were still playing a lot of music from cassettes back then. I didn't have so much of an LP collection at all. So, um, you know, back then that whole CD LP debate, which I could have today, I never had. But anyway, I went into the dealer, um, he sort of surveyed what I had. Um, and I'm not actually, yeah, no, I didn't get the kit from the CAF kit from them. Um, but you know, I had some experience and, and some some ideas about quality um, all already un, under my belt at that point. And, um, and so the dealer said, well, you know what? Um, we've got this listening room. Uh, it has 25 speakers. You have a, a little console where you could switch between those 25 speakers. They were all hooked up to a quad, uh, I think a four, 05.2 uh, amplifier um, all the, the volume levels had been adjusted so that all the speakers sounded equally loud and could and I think they had I'm not um, I think they had a Rotel CD player hooked up to it um, and so this was, was and so you, you just were invited basically in three hours to select three speakers that you liked most and um, you could bring your own CDs. You could. Uh, they had a couple as well. Um, that, just that were just deemed to be good sound quality, so you could have a listen to those as well. And um, s set them down, and then select your three, and then they will take out those three and position them properly into the room, so that and and remove the others, um, so they had less impact on the on the sound because when you have twenty five boxes, they all interact with each other, and so um, they pick then those, those those three, set them up properly. And then you, you spent another hour or something or a second listening session with those three loudspeakers. Um, and so I remember on a winter's day that I would just, I probably spent the whole afternoon there. Um, and then of course you get, in the end you have your favorites, your three favorites. And then he's, and of course then the guy, because you know, he knew that I had self-built, came in and said, well, you know, I've also got, you, you might, you know, this might be interesting and and 
What he put next to the system was one of the, uh, two of these, which is the Quad ESL 63, which he had there second hand refurbished. Um, they had a new um, high um, frequency unit, so these were fine, but the high frequency unit had been replaced. Um, and it blew me away, like the sound was just so much better. And uh, no, he didn't hook them up to the 405, it was to a different amp. Um, I'm not sure if he actually hooked it up back then to that, but uh, um, it just blew me away. It was on a whole different level. And so the listening room that I had been in was probably at, at you know, today's money probably was speakers up until say $3,000 or something. Um, we're talking Australian dollars, so 2000 US probably. Um, price point uh, and these were just blue and the, the, the experience was just unlike unlike that at all um, yes it was a bit lacking in the bass but it, everything else was just on a whole different transparency level it, it, very moving uh, sound so I bought these um, he also had a, sen a set of refurbished hello Millie uh, he had also a set of refurbished quad 33 and 303 um, so a preamp and a power amplifier. I didn't get uh, this one, FM3. And so that was my first setup. And um, that remained there for a couple of years um, until I actually replaced um, the whole quad, quad setup with a BHP35 and a um, passive preamp that I soldered together myself with a 24 um, um, bit switch to a 24 step switch uh, with you know I don't know what it was called plated contacts or whatever it was it had nice contacts um, and then I, I, I bought the resistor uh, I calculated and bought the resistor network and yes um, so but the thing of course we, with this video series is called the digital trap uh, but um, just to the, the first start of my system um, as you can see was actually I, could, I actually was able, due to having a good retailer in my uh, neighborhood, which had very good ethics, but also had their own service department, they could actually tell me a lot about the technology that I was buy, buying, but also they offered me the chance to listen to 25 speakers in four hours. Now, that is not really sufficient, but it, it is a quantum leap if I had to do this online how would I compare 24 speakers you just can't like, you can't and, and despite there be, of course being differences between you know your your setup and their listening room it was a shortcut uh, in in so many ways and of course then making the choice to have one of these um, which in the end uh, got me so much joy um, at that time by the way these things didn't attract a premium they were just outgoing old technology in some ways because the quad ESL 63 was there it was being sold at full price um, so these were maybe traded in I don't know people uh, thought they were room heaters or something um, but I thought they were beautiful and, and the sound was on, on another level um, even though you you know you looked a bit like a nerd like a, probably as a student but um, very special um, and then with this I had a very proper sound um, uh, a level that I had long not reached in the probably in the 30 years afterwards it only took me now to this where I have the system now to actually have gotten back probably to this level even though I don't have a direct I still have this amp by the way it's, it's still with my sister in the Netherlands, but um, um, but yeah, despite maybe the progression, the learnings that you can take away from this is a having the access to to listen to that many speakers and 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 in comparison um, um, in a very well set up thing because with the volume level uh, control and so on, you're making actually good A B comparisons. Um, but also having the time, that like for uh, having three, four hours in a listening room with, with those speakers does allow you to revisit things and also enjoy things for like 20 minutes and then switch back to another speaker and then uh, switch back again. Um, it is just enough time to actually make a uh, probably an informed transition. So there's that. But also what is shockingly, and, and this is part of my, the topic of this whole video series, is the digital trap because... 
this was so good. Oh, however, all the, the later informed stages um, led me into a trap that got deeper and deeper and deeper um, until I finally jumped out of it. And that, that's what I will be detailing in, in, in video two, in my follow-up video, how that pro progressed. But I'll first go into the, because we haven't talked about it, is, is my first CD player. Now that was this one. Um, so this was the source that went with this system. It was a, a Philips CD880. Um, Philips had done a complete redesign on, on how the, the logic and how the board was laid out compared to most of, almost all of their other uh, CD players. Where, and this one, by the way, also had a Marantz um, equivalent. I, I don't know what the number was. Probably also something like 880 or something. I don't know what it was. Um, but very heavy player, 11 kilos or 10 kilos or something. Um, honeycomb, uh, cast iron, um, casted metal uh, frame I, at the bottom, cast metal um, transport, um, TDA 1541A, uh, single crown deck chip. Um, and you know what, as a whole, so if you now seen the system, this, this system could bring you to tears. So when I had this assembled, to my mind, even with the Quad 303, for, to me, it was such a step up to any other thing, and, and, it, and it brought music experience to an emotional level. Uh, that was how good it was. You could just sit there at night and listen to it and just be, be lost. Uh, even when I had friends over, would just sit in the room, not even in the stereo spot, but it could create set in an ambience and a feel into the room. It could play really loud without being um, disturbing anybody's hearing. It was so... Um, you know, the, the way probably the distortion was, was so low or it was of such a nature that you could play it loud all day and, and never have any fatigue. It was it, by all means a brilliant system and, and it took me an incredible long time to actually get back to the sound that this CD player sound. And I will argue that even the modern chips, if you take this one, 32-bit, so many, you know, probably can do 7, 6, 8 kilohertz sampling rate. Does this sound better than that? Um, I would doubt so. Um, a lot, by the way. Uh, but it has all the specs, but none of the things that probably matter to this. But that aside, we'll get into that. Um, and, and just to then highlight what the digital trap was, is my second CD player. And by the way, these two CD players, this is the Denon DCD2560. Is my second. None of these photos are mine. Later on in the videos, I'll, I'll use my own photos, but these units look exactly like I bought them. Like they're 100% the same, exactly the same version. So um, there's, there's multiple versions of this DCD2560, but the ones that I'm showing you are exactly the way like the mine looked. Um, so I bought these both new. Um, I got a very good deal on this because of a friend of mine went, um, was in Germany at the moment at that point and he was able to get this tax free uh, from um, in the military and um, so I had a, a chance to compare these two and when I compared them and, and, and this is the other big thing how you get into a digital trap this CD player seemed A being it there were subtle differences it, it wasn't that much, but it seemed like in every little aspect, whether it was bass, it was a treble, detail, resolution, it just seemed just a bit better than this player. And now the deck chips, it had four of these chips. AudioNode uses them in the top of the line decks. It's the AD1862N uh, and in the K grade version. So it had four of these. Very unique. By the way, these two players now go for way more than I purchased them for for back then. Way more, both of them. Um, I still have this player. My sister has it. Um, so, but I made a mistake here, and the mistake was, and I never discovered it until way, way, way later, like until now, is that when I moved from that CD player to that way, the emotional aspect of music experience, it disappeared with this player. And now, unlike probably what people will share you about the audio note decks, I would still say 
it is probably due to the implementation, whatever was the cause. But in none of the ABs, you will test against yourself sitting down on an evening, just relaxing the music and getting brought to tears by the music, which I had with this player, but so much less with this player. And, and you could say maybe it's just, you know, a coincidence with hardening up as you grow up or something, but I wouldn't say so, but because it's, it's, it's still there. I had it now with analog sources, but this is the makings of the digital trap. And back then I wasn't even buying on spec. This was just purely based on listening and ABs. And this is where ABs got me wrong. So. That is the start of my journey. We'll then jump forward to when I went to Australia and um, had to rebuild my whole system. And um, I'll, I'll pick out some decks and, and we'll pick that up in, in, in part two. Well, we'll look at these and Onkyo um, SECD and we'll look at um, Arkham Airduck and then at the uh, RME AD2, but that will be in the second video. So this was for the first part how I initially selected the, the, the thing, how dealers can help you and how ABs can get you wrong. And um, yeah, that's the first part in, in how the digital trap sprung up to me. And, um, and in part two, we'll get into that. And then we'll also probably part, we'll probably create a part three, um, how that all got me into tube and building because um, it was really caused by bad decks that had me built really good amps and, and, and diff, trying different amp designs. So we'll get into that in future videos. Um, until this, I hope you enjoyed this first part and um, thank you for listening, watching, and uh, I'll hope to catch you in the next video. Until then, have a brilliant day and bye-bye.